So family. I love my family. I love to spend time with my wife and my daughters. Later this month, I'm going to travel to Ohio and spend some time with my father. He's going to be 89 this year. Some of my most important memories, some of my greatest joys have been family trips and family celebrations. And yet, many of us have also had great experience of frustration with family. The very ones that we trusted were the ones that let us down. Sometimes family, which should be the very place of safety, becomes a place of violence and a place of abuse. And even if not abusive, family can often be stifling. If we come out as gay or transgender, lesbian, bisexual, queer, if we marry someone outside our culture, if our dreams are somehow outside the expectations of our family. Family can often be a stifling place. The scripture this morning reminds us that Jesus provides an entirely different understanding of family. He moves beyond traditional family to chosen family and to faith family. This morning we're going to look at this scripture that was enacted in our midst. Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Who are my sisters? Those who do the will of God. Those with whom I am on a journey of faith. Those with whom I am becoming all that God has created me to be. So we're going to start this morning with moving beyond traditional family, and then we're going to look at the possibilities of chosen family and of faith family. It starts by getting beyond the values of traditional family. As, as Jeanette and Myra shared with us so powerfully this morning, it can be so painful, so damaging, so inappropriate, so unproductive to try to meet the expectations of society, to try to meet other people's desires, to try to be a family that others think we should be. And yet it's no accident. The comments made by parents, the comments made by neighbors, the images we see on TV, the images that are in the movies, the role models that are the characters that represent families in so many different media that we see are so often determined by how we've come to understand traditional family. And we have to understand that this is not an accident. Particularly in the early 1980s, traditional family values became a rallying cry for conservative political and religious groups. There are very well-funded groups like the American Family Association and Focus on the Family and the Family Research Council that have grown up specifically to develop this so-called traditional value of the family. Oftentimes, they cloak anti-gay campaigns in the cloak of Christianity. As, as uh, Wildman, the head of the American Family Association, says that we are promoting traditional values as taught by Christianity. And this is where my blood begins to boil. Because Jesus was anything but an advocate of traditional family. Jesus moved beyond traditional family. He encouraged his disciples to move beyond the expectations of traditional family. As his first act of ministry, Jesus called people out of traditional expectations and rules of family. James and John and, and Peter and Andrew were, were fishermen. That was what the family expected them to do and be. They grew up by the sea, generations of fishermen who made their living uh, catching fish, bringing it home to the family, raising children so that the boys would become fishermen and the girls would become housewives so that they could have families and those boys could become fishermen and their wives could become housewives. 
Jesus called them to leave your nets, leave your boats, leave your father in the boat and come follow me into a new conception of what family can be. There's no disrespect for family in this. There's no respect, disrespect for mother or father or anyone else. Soon after they left, they were in the home of Simon's mother-in-law, healing her and, and having a time of family and eating a meal together with her. You know, Jesus was close to his mother and brothers. When his disciples fled, his mother was the one that was still there with him at the cross. There's no disrespect for family relationships. But there is a need to move beyond the traditional roles and expectations that family tries to limit us into. Jesus invited us to choose family. In this question that he asks, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Who are my sisters? Not determined just by biology. Family is not just about blood. Family is about love. Jesus answers the question by saying, whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. Whoever is with me in crossing boundaries, whoever is with me in learning to love neighbor as we love self, this is my family. We can move beyond these boundaries and choose uncles and aunts and cousins and brothers and sisters as has been done in cultures and generations down through the ages. We know that chosen family has become particularly important within LGBTQ circles, oftentimes not by choice, but because sons and daughters have been rejected by family, have been turned away by family, have been disowned by family, have said, if you want to be a part of our family, you can't be who you are. And so out of necessity, as was mentioned by Ray, 40% of homeless youth, LGBTQ, not only because of the relations with family, but also because social services and shelters often are filled with homophobia. So how can we learn to choose family and to be family with one another? It can absolutely include being with biological family, choosing to love one another, as the powerful testimonies of, of Myra and Jeanette and so many others tell us. It can also mean that at times we need to move beyond the traditional boundaries of family. When I was 21 years old, I knew I had to leave home. And it wasn't because I didn't have a supporting, loving family, but it was because I knew that God was calling me to something that was not present in the Ohio suburb in which I grew up. And so I remained close. My uh, family was the place I would usually go during holidays. My father was there for my daughter's graduation. But since leaving Ohio, I have lived in Texas and California and the Philippines and Washington and Baltimore and New York. I may have grown up in Columbus, Ohio, but the Bronx is my home now. Because that's where chosen family is at this point. For Jesus, chosen family is particularly faith family. He connects who are my brothers and sisters, who is my mother, specifically with the question, who does the will of God? That is my mother and my brother and my sister. And Jesus defines that in a very specific way. The greatest commandment of all is to love God with all our hearts, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. And when the lawyer wanted to know more about what you mean my neighbor, Jesus said a story in which a Samaritan, not a member of biological family, not even a member of the tribe, not even a member of the race, not even a member of the religion, somebody considered outside, somebody looked down on, somebody marginalized, becomes family because of the way they act, because of what they do, because in a time of need, they reach out with human compassion. Chosen family is faith family. You know, this whole incident that we're looking at this morning happened at a time of controversy. Right after Jesus had launched the movement, right after he had invited disciples up on a mountain and charged them with this great movement, they were going to start to cross boundaries and confront injustice and challenge the status quo. 
And the powers that be reacted so threatened by that. Immediately they sent their officials down from Jerusalem to begin to undermine Jesus, to start calling him names, just as government often talks about subversive or communist as a way to undermine people. So they started talking about Jesus as a, a prince of demons. He's a demon. He's got a demon in him, and they're spreading this around. And in that context, his family comes to find him, and they want to probably protect him. But they're also afraid. They're afraid for him, but they're also afraid for themselves. Maybe their family name will be dragged through the mud. And so they come to stop Jesus, to call him out of what he's doing, to bring him back into the protection of traditional family. As Jorge shared in his calling out sermon three, in his coming out sermon three weeks ago, sometimes those who want to stifle us do so out of concern for us. They're afraid for us, what the implications might be, but that comes from a place of fear, and we can never be who we are from a place of fear. As much as we love one another, we have to allow one another to be who they are. We have to support and encourage one another as they are. So Jesus says, whoever does the will of God, whoever loves neighbor is my brother and sister and mother. Jesus is inviting us into faith family. Whatever the situation of your biological family, and we could stand up here and talk for days telling the stories of what has worked and what has not what has been joyful and uplifting, what has been discouraging and frustrating and abusive. There are so many stories right here in our congregation about what biological family is. But whatever your experience, you are a member of the family of God. More fundamental than your relationship with your biological family is your relationship with God. When Jesus finally formed that powerful relationship with his mother and with his brothers, who later become leaders in the church, it was in the context of chosen family. He chose his biological family, and they chose to be part of his faith family. You are a member of the family of God. As Tanisha Wright is going to share with us next Sunday in her powerful testimony from Isaiah 49, those haunting words from verses 14 and 15, could your mother forget you? Could your own mother ever forget her child? Yet, says the Lord, even if your own mother forgot you, I would never forget you. Brothers and sisters, we are family. We are a part of the family of God. God, our parent, our creator, loves, knows us from the time of the womb all the way beyond death, all the way from sunrise to, to the next sunrise. And this morning, our invitation, the invitation of the testimonies that were given, the invitation of the poem that's given, the invitation of the music that we've been sharing together, it's an invitation to claim your membership in the family of God. In a couple of minutes, we're going to share family dinner together. And the food that's being served at that dinner is a simple piece of bread dipped in a cup. It's the most simple provision that you can imagine, and yet it's most, the most powerful and elaborate banquet of family love. When we come together around the table of God and share the bread and drink the cup, we are reminded once again of what it is to be the family of God, to accept one another as we are, to be on a journey together to change the world. We are not family trying to establish the status quo and not trying to live up to the status quo. We are family that's called by God to change the world, to change the understanding of family. And we're to do so in the power and the encouragement and the inspiration of prayer in relation to God and in relation to one another. So I invite you this morning to claim your sisterhood, claim your brotherhood in this great family of God. As we come up to receive a family dinner today, we're also going to have prayer stations 
that are going to be across the front. And I want to invite you either before or after you receive communion today to come to one of those prayer stations. And I want to invite you to just come up to them and say, I choose to be a part of the family of God. And then they're going to pray for you, with you, as sister, brother, members of one family together. Gracious God, we come to you today to acknowledge that you are our God. You are our parent. You know the hurts we are going through. You know all that we're dealing with. You know, oh God, that fear sometimes closes us in. But we are opening ourselves to you today to allow the power of your spirit to melt away the hurt and to open us up to the possibility of full relationship with you and brothers and sisters. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen.